Leonardo da Vinci, Vincent van Gogh, Pablo Picasso, Chris Burden. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Chris Burden. I study minimalism. Sculpture, you're supposed to walk around. Sculpture is action. I figured out that the act of doing something in itself could be art. And that's how I got to do performances and call them art. Performance art, that doesn't make it art. It only makes a thing that silly people go to see. He would do things which would be like a slap in the face. He just walks into the buzzsaw and lets the feathers fly. We would make an art that couldn't be bought or sold and gain control of it. You wouldn't buy any art, would you? Why should I buy it? I can make it. I remember Chris feeling his hands trying to figure out where the nails could go through without it hurting. I'm not about death, and I didn't want to die, but I wanted to come close. What if art was violent? What if it was painful? It's as American as apple pie. He was indirectly radicalizing a whole group of us. We were constantly asking ourselves, what is art? What can art be? You never felt safe around the big wheel. There was not a sculpture you could imagine like little kids going up to in awe and wonder. I mean, I could see putting it in the Guggenheim and getting it to spin so fast that it explodes and destroys the museum. I think he's a brilliant guy. But, ooh. Here's a guy brought up in Switzerland with the highest level of education. When you met him, none of that appeared. We build this kind of uh, mystic story about Chris Burden. Chris has never been afraid to make something that manipulates and embraces spectacle. Every detail is perfect. It does push your head around a little. Otherwise, it's not very good art. I knew then, and I know now. He was going to shift art history. The crowd seems happy. Thank you very much, Mr. Burden. Thank you. So did you like that video? Well, I have some interesting movie extras facts for you. Matte paintings were extremely popular before the CGI era. These are actual projections or paintings placed behind foreground objects to trick audiences into believing the actors were in a different location. Examples include the Statue of Liberty jutting out from the sand in Planet of the Apes from 1968 and the Emerald City awaiting Dorothy at the end of the Yellow Brick Road in The Wizard of Oz from 1939. Subscribe to our channel and check the notification bell to always be up to date with all the latest releases.